Let's start with how to understand how disruptions happen. Let's start with technology cost curves. So back in 2014, I published uh, a book called Clean Disruption of Energy and Transportation. And I published this exact cost curve for lithium ion batteries out to 2030. And you can't imagine how I was trolled uh, for publishing that. $125 per kilowatt hour by 2022, it's never gonna happen. What are you smoking, right? And here we are. It's been almost exactly what I forecast. Cost curves are like gravity. Hi everyone, Adam from Rethink X here. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to talk about what disruption is and the data that show disruptions are imminent in four of the foundational sectors of the global economy simultaneously, energy, transportation, food, and labor. So let's dive right in. Disruptions happen when new technology emerges that offers the same or better capability as an older technology at a fraction of the cost. And as a result, the new technology overwhelmingly outperforms and therefore outcompetes the older one. This is why we say the disruptions are driven by economics. Simple, straightforward economic logic pulls market demand away from the old technology because the new technology offers a massive savings of money, time, energy, materials, or unwanted side effects. Now, our team at Rethink X has documented over 100 disruptions throughout history, and they all follow the same pattern. A new technology emerges, and as cumulative production grows, its costs improve, following an exponential decay function. This is sometimes called Wright's Law, after Theodore Wright described the pattern in 1936. And because production itself tends to grow exponentially at first, those costs also decline consistently over time. And that means cost improvements are predictable. Now, conventional analyses often make linear forecasts for technology adoption. But disruptions are not linear. Adoption almost always follows an S-shaped curve, the first phase of which is exponential. Once a new technology reaches about 5% of market share, disruption takes off and it captures the entire market within 15 years or so. We've seen this same pattern again and again for technologies as different as fabric dyes are from digital cameras. My colleague, Dr. Brad Libby, will be covering the history and the dynamics of disruption in a new book and a video series, so stay tuned for that. But in a nutshell, disruptions are non-linear because they're driven by feedback loops. So, as the cost and capability of a new technology improves, demand for it grows. More demand attracts more investment, which in turn expands supply. And as supply increases, the industry gains experience and economies of scale, which loops back to lower the costs and improve capabilities even further in a virtuous cycle. And as the new technology becomes cheaper, and more capable, public and government attitudes shift from resistance to support, which only accelerates the cycle. Now, at the same time the new technology is growing, it's stealing demand away from older technologies. So, the older technologies experience a mirror version of all of those feedback loops. Less demand means less revenue narrower margins, less profit, less support from public and governments, less investment, shrinking supply, higher costs. This vicious cycle sends disrupted industries into a death spiral. Now together, the growth of the new and the collapse of the old make what we call a disruption X curve, or as we say at Rethink X, X marks disruption. So, 
How do we know disruptions are coming in energy, transportation, food, and labor? Well, it's because we see the same pattern repeating itself with new technologies in each of those domains. So let's look at the data. In energy, solar photovoltaics, wind turbines, and electric chemical batteries are following textbook cost curves. For solar, costs have decreased over 80% since 2010 and are still falling. Now the consistency is easier to see when the same data are shown on a logarithmic plot. And it's this consistency that makes the trajectory predictable. For wind, costs have fallen almost 50% since 2010, and it's the same story. The declines have been consistent and predictable. For batteries, it's even more spectacular, with costs falling over 90% since 2010. Consistent and predictable. It took a long time, but when those costs finally approached parity, with older energy technologies several years ago, the disruption took off, exactly as Tony Siba predicted it would. Solar improved by 82% in costs in the 2010s. Some folks said that that was unpredictable. Well, in 2010, I wrote an article, uh, an op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle that said exactly that that I expected solar costs to drop 80 to 90% over the next decade. So the cost curves, again, are like gravity. These things can be predicted. We're now racing up the adoption S-curve, and there's every reason to think the energy disruption will follow the same pattern we've seen so many times before throughout history. And that means fossil fuels are doomed to be disrupted in the energy sector within the next 15 years or so. No different than oil lanterns or horses or typewriters or film cameras were doomed when cheaper, better alternatives outcompeted them. In transportation, it's the same pattern. Adoption of EVs is growing explosively. And again, we see that Tony Siba's predictions were correct. The cost curve in clean disruption predicted was that the market would offer a 200 plus mile electric vehicle by 2025 for about $10,000. The idea that there would be an electric vehicle that was $10,000 ever right, a tenth of the cost of uh, Tesla Model S at the time, was just considered insane. And guess what? Geely announced it. Geely announced uh, a new SUV, um, 200 mile, precisely as I predicted, for less than $10,000. Cost curves are like gravity. In food, Precision fermentation is following the same pattern as well. The technology has been improving for decades and was initially so expensive, it was only viable for pharmaceuticals. But as it's come down the cost curve, it's become cheap enough for cosmetics and now food. It's earlier days for the food disruption than for energy and transportation, but we should see clear signs of takeoff within five years. In labor, artificial intelligence and automation look to be following the same pattern of disruption too. The cost of training and running AI models is falling as computing gets cheaper and the field continues to innovate. We still need more data before we can make concrete predictions about the timeline, but all signs in the data now point to an explosion of labor automation across dozens of industries starting before 2030. And one of the most impactful AI applications will be autonomous or self-driving vehicles. 
Now these will hugely accelerate the transportation disruption as well. And that raises the more general point that the four disruptions are connected. And they're therefore going to accelerate one another. Okay, so what does all of this have to do with solving environmental problems? Well, everything. Now we'll go issue by issue, problem by problem in the upcoming videos, just like I do in my book. But for now, there are three key implications of good news to highlight here. Number one, 90% of all greenhouse gas emissions today come from energy, transportation, and food. So disrupting those sectors with clean technology takes us most of the way to net zero. And because disruptions happen fast, we should expect to be there before 2040. Number two, animal agriculture uses a third of all habitable land on the planet. Precision fermentation, cellular agriculture, and other new food technologies that disrupt animal products will therefore free up about 80% of all that land that we currently devote to livestock. That's 2.7 billion hectares, or an area the size of the United States, China, and Australia combined. So the opportunities for reforestation, conservation, rewilding, they are totally unprecedented here. And it's not just land animals either. Seafood will be disrupted as well. So beyond just climate change, the food disruption will be by far the best thing that has ever happened for reducing humanity's ecological footprint. And number three, the disruption of energy and labor will make everything cheaper. And that's because energy and labor are part of every supply chain of every product and service. They are inputs into everything else. And this is hugely important for the environment. Why? Because the main reason why we don't solve environmental problems everywhere today is cost cost. Prevention and cleanup are expensive. And that's why local environmental issues like pollution are so much worse in impoverished communities and nations than in wealthy ones. By massively increasing prosperity, the disruptions, especially of energy and labor, will make solving environmental problems affordable everywhere. Okay, so the main takeaway from all of this is that once you understand technology and disruption, it quickly becomes clear why we are so much closer to being able to solve our greatest environmental challenges than many of us imagine. And as I've said before, it's not about having an optimistic attitude. It's the data that tell us that clean technologies will disrupt energy, transportation, food, and labor. And fast, not 50 or 100 years from now, but over just the next 15 years or so. And that's why there has never been greater reason to be optimistic about the future of the environment. Okay, that's it for today. Now remember, we can't cover everything in a single short video. There are going to be dozens of videos in this series, and so whatever topics or concerns you may have, we'll get there. Don't worry. I'll also do a few episodes on frequently asked questions. So if you've got a question, be sure to post it in the comments or ask us on social media. And if you're new to Rethink X, please do consider subscribing and giving this video a like or a thumbs up. These little things really do help elevate our visibility and they extend the reach of our work. Thanks everyone for watching and remember the future is brighter than you think. We'll see you all next time. Take care.